channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review thanks for watching through the musical introduction or for skipping it using the new chapters feature on YouTube you can click anywhere along the progress bar right here uh, to see what chapter you're in or click the chapters listed in the description to jump anywhere in the video I was surprised that YouTube allowed the full three and a half minutes of here comes the Sun without copyright strike we'll see how long that lasts Today's fountain pen review is part two of the inexpensive brand name series I started with the Platinum Prefonte last week, which is an upscale Platinum Preppy. This is the Platinum Plaisir, which is an upscale Prefonte. The cool thing about this series of pens from Platinum, the Preppy, the Prefonte, and the Plaisir, is that they are completely swappable, caps, sections, nibs, bodies, and cartridges. I think it is a very clever line of products from Platinum. They give a number of options for the under $20 consumers and allow all of the cool features of the pens to share back and forth up and down the line. For example, if you have the preppy markers or the preppy highlighter tips, you can swap them into your Prefonte or your Plaisir. The Plaisir and the Prefonte only come in fine and medium nibs, but if you're a fan of extra fine nibs, just buy a $5 preppy in the extra fine and swap the nib. It's not only advantageous for the consumer, it's a plus for the manufacturer as well, as they are making the same parts for a range of products. I decided the upgraded parts of the Prevente were worth the extra dollars over the Preppy. Let's see what's upgraded on the Plaisir and figure out if it's worth the extra coin right now. <laughs> Okay, here we are with the Platinum Plaisir, and I'm going to unbox this pen for you, and we'll take a brief look at it, and then I'll be back with uh, the parts and features, do a writing sample, some sizes and measurements, 
and then I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like. Now, it's taken some willpower to keep this in the box for the last week, I can tell you. Uh, while I was working with the Prefonte uh, and comparing it with the, the Platinum Preppy. So you can see that review right here. Uh, but this is sort of like a three-stage program. Uh, the $5 pen, the $10 pen, and the $15 pen in U.S. prices. In Canadian prices, it's a $10 pen, uh, a $15 to $17 pen, and a $20 pen, of course. Your mileage and your currencies may vary. Cypress Creek, where dreams come true. Your dreams may vary from those of Globex Corporation, its subsidiaries and shareholders. So, let's take a look and open this pen up. I've already broken the tape, and it has the same kind of a blister pack kind of uh, box as the uh, Profonte came in. And it has a, a platinum proprietary cartridge in blue-black, which I'm not going to use that ink. And here is the cap and the pen. A slip and seal, they um, guaranteed to be able to write within a year after being capped, made in Japan. The difference, of course, this more upscale pen is metal. It's like extruded aluminum. Of course, we're going to take a closer look at this, but these sections are all the same between all three levels of pen. And then there's the metal cap with a more substantial cap band, a what feels like a very stiff clip, and some more upscale branding than we see on the the first two levels of pen. So here are your levels, the Preppy, the Profonte, and the Plaisir. We'll take a look at this pen once I've inked it up. Now, the question is, what ink to choose for this pen? Since I'm going to empty out this cartridge and fill it with my own ink, I'm going to choose a blue. I wonder why. And let's go through my blues. These are more blue-green, fire and ice. I have... Midnight black, raven black, liquid uh, black. If Mickey was here, you'd have black and blue black. Let me turquoise, of course. Water and ice has some neat, nice deep blue, and it goes into a turquoise, which is very nice. Robert Oster rinse is a possibility. Say no to the gray seas. Now, this, this is KWZ Sheen Machine. I've got a full bottle of this, and look at that sheen. And it's deep blue, went straight on. And with the sheen, it almost goes purple-red. Look at that. Sheen machine, another possibility is the J. Urbain Kyanite du Nepal. No to Conpecky. I've already used Soto Pot Blue in my 355. Bondi Blue is a lovely blue with uh, some red sheen to it. Asagao. Asagao. And this is the other possibility I'm thinking of that shocking blue from Ackermann's. We'll have to see. When I come back, I'll show you what choices I made. So I won't leave you in suspense. I chose the P.W. Ackermann shocking blue, number five. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire your desire. As the ink of choice for the plazier. I decided against buying the Platinum Converter in favor of using the empty cartridges instead. The Converter is more than twice the cost of a Preppy at $8.25 US. That's uh, JetPen.com prices. And the empty cartridges are plenty sturdy enough to be used for quite a long time. All you need is a syringe. And of course you can get two of these blunt end syringes for five bucks at uh, Goulet Pens, and they come in very handy. I discovered a cool thing about cleaning out the feed and section of this pen while I was inking it up. I'll share that when I get to the section itself. Let's look at this plaisir. Immediately you see the upgrades on this pen from the Preppy and the Prefonte, where the Preppy and the Prefonte have exactly the same barrels with different caps, the Plaisir has a completely different cap and barrel from both of those pens. 
The plazier is made from what looks like and feels to me like extruded aluminum. So there will be no eyedropper in here. The first thing I noticed when unboxing it, however, was the silky smooth feel of the cap and the barrel. It is almost too smooth and slippery, but a very, very sexy feeling. I'm dead sexy. The plazier comes in a variety of colors in fine and medium nibs, but like I said earlier, you can swap an extra fine from a preppy into this pen if you need. The size and shape of the body and cap are also a departure from the preppy and the profonte. This pen is wider in diameter and in a classic cigar shape, obviously stolen from the 1928 Schaefer Balance. Here we see a metal clip in a different design again from the Profonte. This one is a lot stiffer than the Profonte, and the Profonte was already plenty stiff. With the slippery body and a stiff clip, I have a difficult time getting this into my shirt pocket. It squirts around in my grip like trying to grab a watermelon seed. Why is there a watermelon there? The cap tapers up to a large cap band that has a number of rib sections to it. The middle part of the section has a plaisir, uh, five, one, two, three, four, five interlaced rings, which I can only assume are stolen from Audi. And one more thing, he has a spaceship. The evidence doesn't lie. My dad is an alien. Uh, the PE logo for Platinum and Platinum Japan. Embossed or engraved on it. And then the final band right here has a nice bevel in it that takes us down to the barrel. The barrel tapers very slightly to the rounded end. The cap snaps off to reveal the preppy and profonte transparent section, and nib and feed. Here is a look at the nib with its P logo for platinum, the O5 for medium, and that simulated breather hole. And there's the plastic feed, which you can see continues on through the transparent section. The grip section is tapered slightly and a good length, so, so you can use this pen with many different styles of grip. When I was filling this, I pushed the included cartridge into the section to uh, pierce the top, or actually to push that ball into the uh, cartridge to release the ink. And I noticed that it pushed some of that blue-black ink that was originally in this cartridge into the feed and section. I syringed out the ink of the cartridge and cleaned both the cartridge and the section. One of my viewers of the Profonte review commented that the non-removable feed here could be a problem with particulate getting into those fins and not being able to uh, get it out. I agree, uh, but what I did was I removed the nib just like this. It just comes out that easily and you can swap it with a, with a Preppy or a Profonte if you want. And then I removed the ink cartridge and I used my bulb syringe to syringe in water. And I ran a lot of water through it, both ends. Um, and that cleaned most of it out, but there was still some ink in these fins. So what I did then was I put the bulb syringe in there and filled it up, filled up this section with water and then put a Kleenex at one end and blew into this end with my mouth, my mouth covering that seal. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. And I was able to doing that a couple of times and it blew all the the ink that was accumulated in there correct completely out and uh and worked really really nicely and then we just 
slide that nib right back into that section. Put the cartridge back in just like that. And we're cooking with gas. Also with the cartridge, when it was out of the pen and I had flushed it out with my syringe, I got most of the ink out, but there was still some water and stuff in there. And that mouth of the platinum uh, cartridge, same thing with the Pilot. It's, it's plenty wide. And it's just wide enough to stick a Q-tip or cotton swab into there and clean the whole thing out. And uh, that was really quite handy. I like these Platinum and Pilot wide mouth cartridges. They seem to allow more ink flow have greater capacity than the standard international with one full milliliter of ink in them, and they're wide enough to clean out with that Q-tip. As I mentioned, all these parts are swappable and interchangeable. So let's do some swapping. Even though the barrels and caps are all different between the Plaisir, the Profonte, and the Preppy, you'll find that the caps will interchange Just like that, and just like that. Even the preppy cap goes on the plaisir. It makes for a really funky looking pen. That's strange. All of a sudden, I don't quite feel like myself. Oh, I feel all right, and yet I, I, uh... Hey, you know better than that! <laughs> but, <laughs> it's possible. So the idea is you can take this section cartridge nib and put it in the Preppy, put it in the Prefonte, or put it, put it in the Plaisir, which means you could buy one Plaisir for like $15 and buy four or five Preppies. So you could fill it up and with five different colors, and then whatever you feel like for that workday, pull the section cartridge and nib out of your preppy, put it in your plaisir, and you're ready to go for the day for the different kind of ink. I think that's a cool idea. All of the caps have the slip and seal feature. You can't see this one as well as you can on the more transparent other pens, but there it is right inside. So they're guaranteed, or I don't think they're guaranteed, but they claim that you can cap this pen full of ink and then a year later return to it and it will still write. It seems to work. So far, I've never had any hard starts on any of these pens. The cap posts deeply and securely. And with the extra girth and the slightly extra weight of the plaisir combined with the same section nib and feed as the preppy, this is such a comfortable pen to write with. This pen is $14.24 at Jet Pens. The Pilot Metropolitan is $19.50. The Plaisir has a comfortable grip, good heft, and posts deeply and securely. The Metro posts nicely and deeply, but with the smaller section, the heavier back weight of that cap, and that horrible sharp step right there on this pen it just doesn't feel comfortable in my hand and i've not uh, grown fond of the pilot metro i know a lot of people love this pen but uh, it's not comfortable for my grip so i think this pen here is the pilot metro killer but in saying that i think pilot has made their own metro killer in my opinion anyway stay tuned for the review of the Pilot Explorer coming soon. Trust me, I know what you want. The previews, the coming attractions. And now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Platinum Plaisir with the Platinum Prefonte, the Platinum Preppy, the Pilot Metro, and the Pilot Explorer. Now let's look at them posted. Okay, here they are posted, and you can see that the Plaisir posts deeper and more secure 
than all of these pens. Um, this one, actually, the Pilot Explorer posts nicely, but not as deeply. And it ends up being a lot longer than all of them. Now we'll look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Platinum Plaisir. It is a medium nib. What they call O5, which is 0.5 millimeters. And the ink is PW Ackerman. Shocking. This is a decently wet pen and very smooth. Here is the test card for the ink and I don't know whether you'll be able to see this or not. I'll try at all angles but uh, there's quite a purple sheen to this. It is deep blue straight on, but then on an angle you get this reddish sheen that makes it very purple. Very interesting ink. Here it is with a Roshizuku Asagao and KWZ Azure number five. And as to line variation, that's no pressure. Again, the nib is identical to the Prefonte, uh, which there's no line variation. The, the nib actually bends a little bit away from the feed, but it doesn't separate those tines at all. So there's no line variation to be seen. And you'd not expect any out of that type of nib anyway. Let's listen to it right. This guy goes to a psychiatrist and says, Doc, uh, my brother's crazy. He thinks he's a chicken. And uh, the doctor says, well, why don't you turn him in? And the guy says, I would, but I need the eggs. Well, I guess that's pretty much now how I feel about relationships. You know, they're totally irrational and crazy and absurd. And But uh, I guess we keep going through it because uh, most of us need the eggs. You. for some reverse writing. It's actually very functional in reverse writing and you get a much thinner line. It's a little bit scratchier. Anything would be scratchier than this glassy smooth nib. And some quick writing.
it keeps up very, very nicely. And there you have it, the Platinum Plaisir. When I first heard the name of this pen, I thought they should come in pairs, but then I realized it was just a misprint. So, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? There's actually a lot to like. And actually, more than I expected for a $20 over-the-counter fountain pen. The first thing I like, of course, is how it writes. It's glossy, smooth, and wet. I like that this pen is a little wider than the Prefonte. The Preppy and the Prefonte are nice pens, and I like them for their price point, but neither will stay inked for me. This pen, however, I think I will keep it inked for a while after this review. Not only does it write perfectly, it has that slip and seal feature, which is really nice and seems to work well. I'll be able to tell for certain within a year. I love the look of this pen. It's sleek and stylish, and I usually dislike metal pens, as they're usually heavy and fingerprint magnets. No fingerprints on this puppy. The swappable parts are also a great feature. You can get a bunch of preppies in various nibs and fill them with various colors by filling the empty cartridges. And then just swap the ink you want for today into the plaisir and off to work you go. I think that's a terrific feature. Plus, you know that your inks and all of your preppies will not dry out. And I like the metallic satin colors. This dark blue especially. So what do I dislike? Well, the clip isn't all that great for functionality. It looks great, but it's way too stiff. Plus, the pen is really slick, and I keep dropping it, or it scoots across my desk when I try to grab it, and it squirts between my fingers. But that's about it. I'd complain about the price, but it's only 20 bucks Canadian, with no delivery charges because I get them over the counter at my pen store. Next time I'm there, I might have to pick up three or four more preppies and try out my ink swapping ideas. Now that I find I really like this pen, I'm excited to unbox and try out my next pen in the cheap, crappy name brand pen series, the Pilot Explorer, and put it up against this plaisir in a shootout. So stay tuned, cheap, crappy pen watcher. Same pen time, same pen channel. Same bat time, same bat channel. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.